Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Destination Dead End, another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If your life's going into a tailspin and the odds are against you, call on me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, I cannot pay big fee for your services. That would mean I would have to go to my son for the money. That I would never do. But no matter what my son has done, he is still my own flesh and blood and I must help him. He is in trouble. I know it. I feel it. Because I have... If during the day, would you come and talk to me tonight? Maybe I can still save him. And it's signed Sophie Pevelman, 93 River Street. Pevelman? Pevelman? Do you know him, George? Yeah. Yeah, he's that glamorized private eye who's been training information with the biggest racketeers in town. Talking his little head off or keeping quiet for a price. Oh, golly. George, I don't think we belong in this picture with Dickie Boy. I wasn't thinking of him, Brooksy. Well, then think of yourself. Logic tells me you're right, Angel. But shouldn't somebody be thinking of a mother who can sense that her son is playing with dynamite? I can tell you everything later, Mr. Valentine. But right now, you must go to Richard. Hey, wait now. I know something is going to happen to him tonight. Look, uh, have a heart, Mrs. Pevelman. I haven't even had a chance to think about it. Oh, I was praying for you to get here. It was like a knife turning around in my heart to hear my son on the phone. Well, try to calm down. He told Just me, what did he say? He told me he was having dinner at the Richelieu restaurant. Well, the worst that could happen to him there would be drowning in a finger bowl. He said he ordered everything the best and had to talk to me this last time. That wasn't all he said. No. One more thing that makes me sure he is in terrible danger, Miss Brooks. What's that? When Richard was a little boy, sometimes he would get into bad trouble and run away. It is not easy for young people to be good in this neighborhood. Go on, go on. When the trouble was real bad, he would say, Goodbye, Mom. See you day after tomorrow. Then I never knew when he would come back. And is that what he said tonight? Yes. Don't you see? He was trying to tell me he did not know when I would see him again. Just like when he was a boy. All right, Mrs. Pevelman, you stay put. If it'll make you feel any better, we'll get over to the Richelieu and see what's bothering your son. Knowing the spot you're on doesn't seem to interfere with your appetite, Pevelman. <laughs> And the condemned man ate a hearty meal. Well, if you know that Downey's thugs are waiting outside to shoot you down, why don't you call the police? Because it would be tomorrow night and the night after that. And even I can't afford fabulous feasts like this every night. Your mother isn't going to take this as nonchalantly as you are. She'll get over it. Hey, look. Yeah? How'd you ever get in a jam like this? You just don't buy Charvé ties, suits from Bond Street, and peel shoes just being another private dick who turns in a report and forgets it. All right, so you don't. Well, the boy from River Street in the slums, he wanted these things. In my job, I picked up a lot of useful information that nobody else could get. I traded it in like a broker. What information about Matt Downey's operations have you been selling? And to whom? Scalati. And Matt has just decided to put a stop to it. It's as simple as that. Yeah? Pevelman of River Street. Connoisseur Epicurean par excellence. A private eye with a PhD, his mother slave to get him. It's been a long road just to wind up at a dead end. Hey, look, stop being dramatic, will you? I gotta dream up a way of getting you out of here alive. For your mother's sake. Yeah. Hello, Mom. This is your boy, Richard. The inauguration is over, and I'm calling you from the White House. Very glib, very glib. 
Look, Valentine, before you knock yourself out on my behalf, I ought to tell you. Over there, that's Downey, my nemesis himself. The punk with him is a trigger-happy character named Jinx. They're not gonna knock you off in here. Oh, nothing as crude as that. I get it out on a public thoroughfare by some hired gunsels while they sit the alibi out where everybody can see them. I'll be back in a few minutes. You gonna pass a miracle? Maybe. See you in a while. Find about me quick. Hey, please, this is the chef at the Richelieu restaurant on Carlton. Fire in the kitchen, everything. She is burning down early, right there, way. quick, quick. Oh, now if my phony French accent didn't get in the way, something ought to happen. Hey, Johnny. Those your hoods draped all over the street outside? What? Who asked you over? Me. Wanted me to get rid of them, Matt. Take that toothpick out of your mouth, Jinx. All right, friends, you're dealing. Go ahead. You heard the question. I don't know what you're peddling, but I don't want any. Don't play innocent, Johnny. You're not dressed for it. Be that comic Amscrave. Disappear. And give my love to Pebbleman. Hey, there must be a fire out there. Hey, now, take it easy, everybody. There's just a small fire back in the kitchen. What are you trying to pull, funny boy? I'll let you know when you wake up, dude. And you're never going to... Sorry, that is a... Over here, George. Hang on, Brooksy. Come on, Pebbleman. We're getting out of here. Valentine, what's going to be next with you, huh? From day to day, the suspense kills me. Now you're turning in phony fire alarms. Look, Lieutenant, how about Pevelman? You say you want me to keep him stashed away, huh? Well, what do I charge him with, pal? And how do I keep somebody from bailing him out? Pevelman will be happy to be charged with anything just to keep Downey off his tail. Well, you could have found him jaywalking or talking sassy to an officer or uh, putting mustaches on paintings in the museum. Oh, don't be so helpful, Miss Brooks. And to keep him from being bailed out by certain interested parties, you can shut him around from one precinct to another. Just don't let him get slammed out. Why should I protect him? He never cooperates with us. He won't tell us a thing. If Downey and his hoodlums are gunning for him, we ought to know why. Riley, you'd like to get something on Downey, wouldn't you? <laughs> what do you think? All right, then. It's a bargain. Before the night's over, I expect I'll be seeing a lot of Mr. Downey. Look, Valentine, let's stop the potsy. We can make a deal. Okay, name it, Downey. I'll even listen. Forget you're working for Pebbleman, and I'll forget I owe you something for that fancy shuffle at the Richelieu. I ain't forgetting it. Close your head, Jinx. Yeah. I'll make it interesting. A wallet full of shin plasters with big numbers on them. I got an old lady with a strong sense of justice paying me off. It wouldn't be ethical to shack up with you. Where do you want to bother with Pebbleman? You know he's a rat. Now, where is he? In Durance Vile. You gonna let him talk to you that way, Matt? Oh, jail to you, Jinx. Jail, your old alma mater. Okay, Valentine. We'll find a way to bail that double-crosser out. It's gonna take you some time. I made a little game out of it. It's called Pebbleman, Pebbleman. Who's got Pebbleman? I've got time. You better have plenty. Our friend can plead guilty to a charge that'll keep him in the can until I can find out what'll put you where he is. Okay. Now let's stop being cute. Look, get Pebbleman out in the open. That's okay for sound, but you're repeating yourself. You got no choice, Valentine. You see, I got the old lady where nobody can get to her. What's that? Yeah. It's either the son or the mother. Now make up your mind. We'll 
return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Meanwhile, a word of advice from a fellow motorist. One of the worst enemies anyone's car can have is interior engine corrosion. And probably no one is more aware of this fact than a man who looks after a railroad's diesel engines. The man I have in mind is Mr. George L. Higgs, diesel locomotive supervisor for the Spokane-Portland-Seattle Railroad. Having had excellent results with RPM Delo oil in locomotives for years, it was natural for Mr. Higgs to use compounded RPM motor oil in his automobile and in his pleasure boat. Among other advantages of RPM motor oil, Mr. Higgs points out, quote, it's one oil that prevents corrosion and increases bearing life, unquote. Well, you don't have to run a railroad to find out that RPM motor oil gives your car protection you trust. All you have to do is get a crankcase drain and a refill with RPM. For proof of how this premium motor oil keeps your engine clean, just watch how dirt drains out with the oil after a service period. All the time, RPM is lubricating your engine. It's keeping internal contaminants dispersed in the oil, where they'll drain out when the oil is changed. So for longer car life, get RPM motor oil tomorrow at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean, we take better care of your car. A strong-willed but humble woman tells you she fears her son is in trouble, and brother, she isn't wrong. A private detective who thinks ethics is just another word in the dictionary has been peddling combustible information to two rival racketeers, and one of them, Matt Downey, is about to give him a permanent wave. If your glandular makeup is anything like George Valentine's, you play along, and Downey comes up with this fine-fingered gimmick. Yeah? It's either the son or the mother, Valentine. Now make up your mind. I'll play ball. How can I be sure I can trust you? You can't. You'll just have to coast on the deal. You like to make things tough, don't you? You know how much I trust you, Downey? As far as I can throw that baby Grant with both hands tied behind my back. Jinx. Yeah, Matt? Call Frankie out at the lake. Tell him to put Mrs. Pebbleman on the phone. You know what'll happen if you cross me. Oh, I'll be careful, all right. I'm not one of those morons who thinks it's a trend to be brave. No, you're being Frankie, smart. This is Jinx. I'll even let you go out and pick her up yourself. She'll be in a car with Frankie right near my place. Hold it a minute. There she is. Go ahead, Valentine. You all right, Mrs. Pebbleman? Mr. Valentine. Uh Uh-huh. Where is Richard? How is he? He's safe. Now listen, I'm coming right out there to get you. You? Coming here? That's right. I... I will be waiting, Mr. Valentine. See you day after tomorrow. Day after? Yeah, right away. Now, don't worry about a thing. Goodbye. All right, Valentine. I'm taking your word that you'll contact your connections and let Pebbleman be sprung. Let's put it this way. My word is as good as yours. (laughs) Take Route 22. About a mile past that big drive-in theater. Frank, you'll be waiting at the bottom of the hill. Blow your horn twice so he'll know it's you. Yeah, just like in the movies. Be seen. Come on, Matt. What's the offbeat? Very simple. Valentine isn't coming back. You saw how troublesome he can be. But I thought you were... We're gonna... holding on to Mrs. Pebbleman. As long as I have her, I can smoke Sonny Boy out any time. This is a spot, Brooksy. Did you manage Pebbleman's car all right? Oh, yeah. But golly, George, I could hardly follow you in this fog. Good girl. You got everything straight? Yeah, I think so. Okay, now here we go. Here's the signal. Yeah. Hey, look, that fog light's just went on down there. Yeah, and that light over there. Downey's house. Now, give me five minutes to cut across and get there. Then start up Pebbleman's car. Let it roll down the hill. The closer to those fog lights she piles up, the better. Okay, George. 
I'll be waiting here in our car with the motor running. Good luck, honey. What's going on out All right, Jinx. Silent. Hands time. behind your back. I don't want to use this gun. There's enough noise out here. Oh, Mr. Valentine, they were waiting there for you, all those men. They were going to kill you. Yeah, I know. Come on, get your things, Mrs. Pebbleman. We got to get moving. I tried to warn you on the phone. You did. I told Matt not to get fancy. Too bad he didn't listen, Jinx. Because I got to put you out of circulation. <laughs> all right, come on, Mrs. Pebbleman. You're going to sit this out in Brooksy's apartment while I talk it over with Lieutenant Riley. What do you mean, Pebbleman is out? You heard me. He wanted out. So he put up his own bed. But wait a minute. I don't get it, Lieutenant. The gears don't mesh. He knows what town he has scheduled for him. Well, maybe he's tired of breathing. Anyway, all I had against him was hitching a ride on a fire truck. Holy. Something must have conked out. Why did he change his mind? Look, pal. I did a little checking. I know Pebbleman's racket, see? He's been acting as an information pipeline for every mob in this town. Now, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? Well, what would you use for proof? Have you got any even now? And right at this moment, he's a walking target. Because he sold out Downey so Scarlatti can move into the River Flats District first with the numbers right. I don't want to repeat myself, Riley, but where's the proof? Well, uh, well, give me time. But I'll tell you this much. If we get our hands on Pebbleman again, I'll find a rap that'll really stick He's no better than Downey Scarlatti or any of those other muck Okay, heels. okay. I won't argue about that. And Valentine, I uh, seem to remember you promised me something to nail Downey with. I got that, Lieutenant. But I can't deliver it until morning. Morning? <laughs> well, that's only a couple of hours away. Yeah, you're right. But remember what SC almost did to Notre Dame in a couple of hours. <laughs> George, you don't expect to find Pebbleman at his house, do you? Frankly, no, Angel. Yeah? Hello? Hello? Say, who is this? He's there, all right. But that would be the first place Downey would look for him. Brooksy, I don't know what Pebbleman is up to. But if he wants to play it this way, I'll help grease the skids for him. Listen, Valentine, I'm tired. I don't feel like answering questions. Oh, what do you think we've been doing all night? Looking at stereoptican slides? Just what made you suddenly decide it was safe to walk the streets again, Mr. Pepperman? Let's say I just drew a couple of high cards since I saw you two last. Now, if you'll excuse me, You know, please. for one optimistic moment, I thought you heard about what happened to your mother and were willing to risk your neck to help her. Yeah, I heard about that over my usual grapevine. I was also told she wouldn't need my help with a smart operator like you working for her. Well, I don't see how all this makes you any better off. Well, but it does, Miss Brooks. So you can just stop worrying about... Well, aren't you going to answer that? I suppose I'll have to. Richard. Oh, you're all right. Mrs. Um, Pebbleman. You shouldn't have come here. I told you not to take one step out of my apartment, Mrs. Pebbleman. It's not safe. I know, my dear, but that's... Now, look, look. Let's pick this meeting up some other time. I got a lot of things to do. Valentine, take care of my mother. Hey, wait a minute. Is that all you got to say, Buster? You know what she's had to go through because of you? Doesn't that mean anything to all you? All right, all right. I'm grateful to you, Valentine. I'll see that you get paid for your trouble. Well, why don't you try being grateful to your mother? Will you stop sermonizing? Go on, get out. Got it all figured. Now how I can deal with Donnie, but I got to do it by myself. Now leave me alone, Ollie. Richard. Yeah, ma. Of course, I'm glad that nothing has happened to you. But there's something else I must say. Now, look, don't you start preaching to me. Your father and I, we worked hard. Not so you could grow up and make a lot of money, but so that you would grow up and be a good man. Tonight, I found out how you help people who break the law. Oh, please, Mom. You look. find out things that make it easy for them. I am glad I worked every day this last year instead of taking one penny from you. Your money is dirty, Richard. Dirty. Oh, 
This is great, great. I Wait told a minute, you. Buster. I know who you're expecting. Now listen. Open the door. Let him come in. But be natural. Now, wait a minute. Look. I'll be against the wall and back of the door. Leave the rest to me. And I have no compulsion about using this gun after what he did to your mother. Okay. Claire, you stay right where you are with Mrs. Pebbleman. Oh. Come in, Tommy. Thanks. I didn't think you'd be calling me. Put that gun away. What? Do you want to have it? Do you? Okay. I hope I didn't break your wrist. Pick his gun up. So you pulled another fast one, eh, Pebbleman? Now, look, this was Valentine's idea. I had a proposition to make, but I, I couldn't talk back to him. He had a gun. So I see. Go on, Downey. Go on, sit down. Now, Brooks, you get on the phone and call Riley. Tell him it's nearly morning. You'll know what I mean. Yes, George. How do you do, Mrs. Pebbleman? Please don't talk to me. George, there's something wrong. I don't get any connection at all. May as well give up, lady. We took care of that phone. What kind of a sucker do you think I am? Do you think I came over here alone? I suppose you got Jinx and his playmates cluttering up the doorway outside. You're so right. Well, funny boy, what's the next move? You can't call the police and you can't leave the house. And after a while, Jinx is going to get worried about me. Look, let, let's talk about my deal. Won't be any trouble at all to pin a kidnapping charge on you, Donnie. But on the other hand, I can see that my mother doesn't talk. Yeah? All you have to do is forget that you don't like me. Well, fair enough. Why not? I might even make it worth your while to come over to me from Scarlatti. You can start telling me a few things. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure, Donnie. Then everything will be all right again, see? And nobody's going to get hurt. Oh, you're one sweet boy, Buster. Richard, do not even talk to that man. Tonight I heard what he does. He takes nickels and dimes from poor people to play numbers. He wants to do that in our neighborhood where you were born to people you know. Richard! Look, Mom. I always had to look after myself. I can't stop now. I'd better go outside and talk to the boys, Donnie. Tell them we made a deal. Stay where you are, Buster. What are you going to do? Shoot me down in front of my mother? <laughs> oh, here, Valentine. Take this envelope, huh? Give it to her later. She'll need it. Why don't you give it to her yourself? After the night, she won't have anything to do with me or mine. You know that. Be right back. Mr. Valentine, Richard has been gone so long. Yeah, too long. Maybe when the boys saw him, they didn't understand. Didn't give him a chance to explain. That'd be too bad. But we didn't hear anything. I'm going out there. George! Brooks, see, I hate to ask you this, but do you think you can keep this gun on Johnny? I... Yeah, I think so. Good girl. And don't mind being a little nervous. That'll remind him he's only half a breath from kingdom come. Help you. Get back in the doorway, you get plugged. Hey, your arm, you're bleeding. Yeah, yeah, but look at that monkey sprawl out in the gutter. Okay. Now we'll just stay where we are. After those shots, the cops will be here any minute. No, they won't be in time. Jinx and another guy are in that hall across the street. I'm going after him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, don't be crazy. Then I'm going upstairs and get down. Pebble, go with that fool. Hey, Pebble, Pebble. Is, is it bad? <laughs> It's a call they had to give. What? What about them? You don't hear any more shots, do you? Swell. I had to get Mom and your people off the spot. Now look, take it easy. Don't try to talk. We'll get you to a hospital soon now. <laughs> I made up for a lot, didn't I? That envelope. Take care of it. Yeah, yeah, sure, fella. I'll see that you take some money. It wasn't money. I'm gonna cook down here. That envelope, lots of names, places. Make a good story for the papers. I'm just gonna like reading. I, I wasn't a complete washout, was I? No, fella. Now with the kind of comeback you made. Well, 
Well, good morning, Brooksy. Well, what's this? Oh, just a heart-shaped box. You know what day it is, don't you? <laughs> I'll be real sharp and say it's Monday. Oh. Well, how do you like... Say, what are these things? Well, they're socks, darling. Argyles. I knitted them myself. Oh, you did? Well, although they don't seem to match, they really do once you get them on. Mmm, yeah. Well, I thought you'd like something bright for a change. Maybe they're a little too bright, huh? Oh, no, no, Angel. Maybe you did use 20 shades of red, but uh, at least you stuck to one color. Well? Oh, Brooksy, I was only kidding. With my moniker, how could I forget this was Valentine's Day? Yes, And of all people, I should respond with some wild and passionate gesture, and I'm going to do that. Do what? Well, no matter what anybody says, I'm going to wear these things. Tonight, I'd like to tell you about a friend of mine who has a brand new car. Can't blame him for wanting to demonstrate it to me. And I can't blame him either for getting embarrassed when his new car wouldn't take an ordinary hill in high gear. Look, pal, I said, what you better put in this here car is command performance. Command performance, he said. Oh, you mean Chevron Supreme gasoline. Well, that's exactly what I meant, so I told him. For Chevron Supreme puts command performance in any car, new or old. That's because special blending agents... In Chevron Supreme, command fast start, speedy pickup, and all the power your car needs to make it great on hills. What's more, no matter where you drive in the West, you can be sure of command performance with this premium quality gasoline. For it's climate tailored to each different altitude and temperature zone. So in mountains, at sea level, or in the desert, rely on Chevron Supreme to put command performance in your car. Ask for it at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Next week at this same time, you'll find George Valentine not in his office, but far away on a tiny Hawaiian island. And Brooksy will be saying... George! George, the boat's gone. Somebody's taken it. Yeah, so I noticed. Well, well how will we get off this island? What do we do? Well, right now, I think we need a little protection. Of... Well, how do you like that? What's the matter, George? Something else is going, Brooksy, out of my suitcase. Your gun? Yeah. Oh, fine. So this weird little drama calls for us being permanent guests in this tropical paradise. Unless we're very smart, Brooksy. Or very lucky. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Let George Do It stars Robert Bailey as George with Francis Robinson as Brooksy. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Tonight's story was written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Tony Barrett as Pebbleman, Jeanette Nolan as Mrs. Pebbleman, Joe Forte as Downey, and Jim Nusser is Jinx. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.